Welcome to Resolve Feud, the game show where we test your knowledge of DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. And you might just learn something too. I'm your host, William Justice. As always, we encourage you to play along at home. If you have any questions, submit them down below in the comments section. If you think you have a better answer than one of our contestants, put it down in the comments and steal their points. If you'd like to play along at home and learn more about DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, filmmaking, subscribe to this channel and like this video. Good luck. Let's meet today's contestants. Willie is a computer programmer. He likes to stay up late and eat pizza. Bill enjoys editing videos and is always up for a challenge. Let's play Resolve Feud. And remember, you can steal those points. Comment down below with a better answer and we'll give you credit in our next video. Round one, this question is worth 25 points. This question is from Brian Tierney. Is there an easy way to make text or object travel? Merge node. Oh, sorry, that's incorrect. Let me finish. Is there an easy way to make text or object travel in a perfect circle and choose the number of rotations? Okay, I know you can set text to go in a circle using the text node. You go to the layout and you set the type to circle and you can use a transform to rotate it. Um, but for objects, I think we need to do something different. I we can use a pivot point. I haven't found a way to create a path in a perfect circle, but uh, we can use some uh, transform nodes to kind of accomplish the same thing. So I have a background set up here going to the media out and let's drag in the object that we want to rotate. And we will connect that up to the output of the background to create a merge node and there we have our object. The first thing we want to do is create a transform. With the median one selected, I hit the transform button and this angle allows us to adjust the rotation of the object. Now, that's not really going in a circle, but what we can do is adjust the pivot point and have it rotate around the pivot point. Right now the pivot point is in the middle of the object, so we can take the pivot point and move it off the object and really move it in where we want. And now the pivot point is gonna stay in relation to the object. This is basically the distance you want away from the center of the rotation. So now when we adjust the angle, you can see it's rotating around our pivot point. Let's see, if we're gonna pick the number of times it's gonna rotate, let's go to the first frame and we'll set the angle to zero and set it as a keyframe. Next, let's go to say frame 400 and let's, let's say we want to rotate it four times. So we know that 360 degrees is one rotation. So what we can do is we can go 360 times four. And you'll see that it turned it to 1440 and that's gonna rotate it four times. So as it's spinning around, the angle of the face is changing. If you want the angle to remain constant, we just need to add another transform with some rotation in it. So let's select median one, hit the transform, We'll go to the first frame and we'll set a keyframe because the angle is going to be zero. Then I think we went to frame 400 and we just need to reverse the rotation to match the outer rotation. So we're going to go minus 360 times four and we got a minus 1440. So now as we rotate around, the angle of the face is going to remain constant. Round two. This question is worth 25 points. Hello, William. Can you recreate this animation in Fusion? Yes, I can set up that animation with a few text nodes and a bit of masking. Here's how you can create a super quick Star Wars style text reveal animation. Let's uh, first I'll start by adding a background and connect that up with the media out. Now we just need to add in our text nodes. So let's start by adding the Star Wars text. We'll drag the text node in and connect it up to the output of the background to create a merge node. And let's style it. So we're going to call it, let's say star, and we're going to choose the Star Jedi font. And let's make it a bit bigger and let's style it with the black with a red outline. So we're gonna hit this little paintbrush icon, set the background color to black and select element two and enable it and make sure that it's set for the border. And this is where we can set our border color. So we'll just set the border color to red. And we just need to duplicate this for the wars with text one selected, hit control C, click off and hit control V to paste it and drag the output on top of the merge. And we should have it there. Now let's change the wording. And we're gonna move this down a bit. And we're gonna take the star text and move it up a bit, just kind of out of the way for now. We're gonna add some more text and this is gonna be back here behind on the background. So let's add the text in and drag it on top of the output of the background to create a merge. And we're just gonna say animation on this one. And you just wanna size this up to where it's about the same size as the Star Wars, like that. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna align everything. I'm gonna take the star and drag it down to where it's just on top of that animation there, the animation text, and let's do the same thing with the wars. Okay, so now we now we just need to do the animation. So we're on frame 40, which is gonna be the, the final frame. So we're gonna keyframe the position of the text. So with text one selected, hit the layout icon and keyframe the 
position and we're gonna do the same thing with text one. But hit the layout icon and keep her in the position. We're going backwards in this one. So we're gonna hit control G to see the guidelines. And we're gonna to go to frame zero and we're just gonna move, let me zoom in a little bit. We're just gonna move the Star Wars text to where the beginning of that guideline is. So let's select the Wars text and drag it up to right where the beginning of that guideline is. This is gonna be the center. And that same thing with the star text, let's select it. And we're gonna move it down to right where that line is. And we're just using the line so we know where the center is. Let's see what the animation looks like. It comes out like that. Then we're gonna do a uh, masking on the animation text. So with the animation text selected, hit the rectangular mask and make sure you're on frame 40. And we're just gonna size this up to where it's just about the same size as that animation text. Um, select the rectangle mask and keyframe the height. Go to frame zero. And we're just gonna set the height over here in the inspector down to zero. And I'm gonna hit control G to get rid of our guidelines. And let's see what our animation looks like. Okay, that's not too bad. So we can take the rectangle and we can bump up the soft edge on it. Okay, we're gonna add a character size effect on the animation text. So let's select the animation text, hit the little brush icon, and go down to size. So we're just gonna adjust the X size and at around frame 40, we wanna keyframe it at size of one. We're gonna go back to frame zero and we're gonna bring it all the way down. So the text will open up like that. I think the last thing I'm gonna do is I want that text to be a little bit bigger, um, the animation text. So we're gonna hit that, go to the text, and let's just bump up the size just a touch. And there we go. We have a real quick Star Wars text reveal kind of animation. And um, we can do a couple other things like adding a glow. Round three, this is a 25 point question and it's related to a video I did about warping your face. Max asked, okay, so how would you track the head slash face for the warp to make the warp stay on correctly? Okay, you can use a planar tracker to stabilize the clip and then apply the effects. Okay, so for the face warp, one of the problems that I had is when I added the warp into the face, as I moved my head around, the warp effect would not track to where my face was. So you can't exactly track the warp directly. So we're gonna stabilize the clip, apply the warp, and then reapply the mo movement of the clip. So let me show you what the problem was in the first place. So with media in one selected, we're gonna add a warp, hit control space, and search for grid warp. And let's bump up the grid size to give us more points to move around with, so like say 20 or so. And we're gonna select the magnet type for selected. And I'm just gonna take my nose and extend it out a little bit. And show you what the problem was. You can see I have my nose extended there, but as we play this clip and I move my head around, the warp is actually gonna to apply to different areas. See right there, it's, it's warping where my eye was. So let's fix this with a tracker. For now, I'm gonna just disable the grid warp and let's select media in one, hit control space, planar tracker, and add that in. So what we need to do is just track my head and we're gonna stabilize it and then take that movement and apply it back. So the first step is to just draw a quick path around the object you wanna track. In this case, it'll be my head. So make sure you're on the first frame, select the tracker type of point area, hybrid point area, and choose translation and rotation and hit this button at the end to track to the end. Okay, now that the tracking is complete, we're gonna, um, select, like with planar tracker selected, hit uh, create planar transform. And we're gonna use this in just a second. Okay, let's go back to the first frame and re-enable the grid warp. So you see my nose, my nose a little bent out of shape right there. Go to hit the planar tracker and we're gonna choose the operation mode of steady. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna stabilize my face so instead of my head moving, the background is moving. And that enables it so that the warp effect is at least gonna be pretty close to where my nose is, even when I'm moving. So to get rid of the background moving, all we gotta do is reapply the transform that we created. So we're gonna take that and drag it in right after the grid warp, and that's gonna readjust us back to where we were and reapply the motion of the clip after the effects are applied. So basically what we did was we have our media in, we stabilize it around my head so that my head doesn't move, apply the effect on my non-moving head, and then use that same transform data to, re to reapply the motion of the clip back so that my head is moving again. Now you'll notice that 
because the frame is shifting around, we have some um, some edges here. And what, obviously, what you could do is you could kind of zoom in, or if you were going to do this, you kind of take a clip where there's a little more there's a little more area around the outside for you to play with. Okay, so let me show you the before and after. So let's uh, let's disable the stabilization and the tracker there, and we're going to play it. You see the warp goes kind of through my head as I'm moving around. And let's put it back on. Go to the planar tracker, enable it, and enable the transform. And now when we play it, the warp sticks to where my face is. Vladislav said, great tutorial, very nice transition, thank you. Can you help me? How to postpone one of the two media end nodes in Fusion? Yes, you can adjust the starting positions. Okay, let's adjust the clip timing. There's a couple different ways we can do this. And I'm gonna take this main clip and overlay it so we can kind of see the differences. So I'm gonna copy the clip with Control-C, paste it with Control-V, and drag the output to the other output, and we got a merge node. We're gonna take the overlaid clip and we're gonna shrink the size down and I'm gonna move it into the corner so we can see. Right now, both of these clips are synchronized, so they're playing with the same timing. First thing we can do is select the overlaid clip and we can adjust the trim. And what this does is it sets the starting frame for the clip. If we went ahead and said set this to like 20, that means the overlaid clip is gonna start at frame 20. Since the background clip is starting at frame zero, the overlaid clip should be ahead in ahead of the background clip in timing. Okay, let's reset the trim. The other thing we can do is if we wanted to delay the overlaid clip, we can use the hold first frame. So let's move that to 20. And that means that the overlaid clip is gonna wait till the 20th frame of the fusion animation to start playing. So the background clip, which is not having a frame held, will be ahead of it. Let's reset that. The last thing we can do is use a time speed node. So with the overlaid clip selected, hit control space bar, search for time speed and add that in. And we can set a delay. So we'll just go do our 20 frames. That means that our overlaid clip will be delayed by 20 frames and the background clip should be ahead of it. There we go. We got a few different ways to adjust the starting points of clips in Fusion. Okay, it's all tied up. Whoever answers the next question correctly wins the game. Bursa Productions asked, could you tell me how to make a bounce decay? I like math, so I would set up the bounce decay with an expression. Okay, here's a real quick overview of how you do a bounce decay with an expression. I have the merge node set up here, and this graphic is going into the merge node. I set up an expression on the position using the merge node and using this uh, formula here, which I will go through, and here's what it looks like. So each bounce is going to be a little less high and it's going to get faster and faster as it gets toward the bottom. So going through the expression up here, um, this is just the X position on the point. The After the comma, this is all for the Y position. So sine goes from um, negative one to one and we use the math.abs to get the absolute value. So the sine is going to go between one and zero. In the middle part, this is how fast it's moving. And then the second part is the speed up. So as the time changes, it gets closer to the end of the clip, where it's gonna, it's gonna start bouncing faster. The second part out here is the height of the bounce. So what this is gonna take the, as it gets closer to the end of the clip, it's gonna start reducing how high the bounce is. And that's how you set up a bounce decay using an expression in Fusion. And it's not rendering real well. My Fusion's not running great right now, so it's a little bit choppy, but that'll get you the idea. Today's big winner is Willie. Congratulations, Willie. Thanks for playing Resolve Feud. My name is William Justice. I make videos about filmmaking, DaVinci Resolve, and Fusion. If you're interested in learning more, please subscribe to this channel. If you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel. If you wanna play along, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate your support. If you have any comments, leave them below. I'll get right back to you. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for playing with us today.